mga ka-learners, welcome to another lesson. Ang lesson natin ngayon ay napakahalaga, lalong-lalo sa mga kapwa kong babae. Men used to think they were superior to women. Some still do. There are still some individuals who do not think that men and women should be treated equally. This module will tell you all about women's rights and responsibilities. After studying this module, you will learn about Number 1. The rights of both men and women. Number 2. Situations showing domestic violence. Number 3. Situations showing sexual harassment. And number 4. Responsibilities of women. Listen to the following passage. God did not create woman from man's head that she should rule over him. God did not create woman from man's feet that she should be subservient to him. But God created woman from man's side that she should stand by his side in life to support him and comfort him that together they may bring their family to God. The passage we just read is from St. Augustine. That talks about the creation of the first woman from man's side that signifies women's equality to men in terms of purpose, responsibilities, rights, and other aspects of life. Now, we will read a comic strip and let's find out what some of the rights of men and women are. Miss Lita Reyes was an activist whose mission was to make her fellow women in her hometown aware of their rights and responsibilities. One afternoon, she gathered her female townsfolk to hear the latest news from the city. I became a member of Gabriella, a non-government organization or NGO concerned with informing women about their rights and responsibilities. It was originally based in the United States but has affiliates here in the Philippines. Have you heard or read about the so-called comfort women during the Second World War? Gabriella has been helping more and more women to fight for their rights and responsibilities. What kinds of rights and responsibilities? Aren't we just supposed to raise our children and love our respective husbands? Oh yes, Marta, you do. For example, you can enter into contracts just like your husband. This will enable you to borrow and take out loans. You can have equal access to all government and private agencies like GSIS, SSS, or Pag-ibig. You can enter into contracts for insurance too. Is it true that I can also go abroad without having to secure the consent of my husband? That's right, Marta. Married women have the same rights as their husbands when it comes to traveling privileges, as in applying for passports, securing visas, and other travel documents. I heard Nyora is being invited to join a civic club formerly exclusively for men. Did I hear her correctly? Why yes, of course, Bertha. Republic Act 7192 or the Women in Development and Nation Building Act now provides women equal rights to membership in clubs or organizations devoted to public service. What can you say about my daughter who wants to study in a military school? Do you think she will be allowed to do so? Of course she will, Melba. Admission to military schools is also provided for in Republic Act 7192. I have a problem. I'm interested in securing a housing loan, but I don't have a job. What should I do? That's easy. You just have to make sure that your husband is a member of the Government Service Insurance System, or GSIS, if he is working for the government or the Social Security System, or SSS, if he works for a privately owned company. Or you can go to the Pagtutulungan, Ikaw, Banco, Industria at Gobierno, or Pag-ibig. Being married to a member of any of these organizations entitles you to apply for a housing loan, even if you yourself are not a member. The law states that a spouse is entitled to at least 50% of what his or her spouse earns. That's nice to know. Thank you, Lita. We learned a lot from you. I will tell others about all this. 
That way, we will all become aware of our rights now, not just as human beings, but as women as well. The UN General Assembly Resolution 2263 or the Declaration on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women has the following important information every person should know. Number one, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights asserts the principle of non-discrimination and proclaims that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights and that everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedom without distinction as to sex. Number two, women have the right to vote in elections and be eligible for election to all publicly elected offices. Number three, women shall have the same rights as men to acquire, change, or retain their nationalities. Number four, Women have the right to acquire, administer, enjoy, dispose of, and inherit property, including property acquired during marriage. Number five, women shall have the same rights as men to free choice of a spouse, to enter into marriage only with their free and full consent. Women shall have equal rights as men during the marriage and its dissolution. Number six, all appropriate measures shall be taken to ensure girls and women, married or unmarried, have equal rights with men in education at all levels. Number seven, all appropriate measures shall be taken to ensure women, married or unmarried, have equal rights as men with regard to economic and social life. Let's test how much you understood the rights and responsibilities of women and men. Ready your pen and paper. Study each of the situations that I will read, then answer the questions that follow. Number one, Aling Sepa is a laundry woman of legal age and a resident of Barangay Capitolio in Pasig City. Her neighbor told her she couldn't vote because she does not have a steady job. Is her neighbor right? Why or why not? Number two, Anna is 21 years old. Her parents want her to marry Pablo so they can pay their debt as soon as possible. Anna does not love Pablo. What right of Anna is violated and why? Number three, Josefa and Pedro have five children. Josefa does not work but stays at home to take care of their children. Pedro lost his job. Because of this, Pedro decided to stop sending their only daughter to school. He said, she's a girl anyway, she'll just marry and have children afterward. Did Pedro violate his daughter's right to education? Why or why not? Compare your answers with those in the answer key provided in your LMS account. How well did you do? Now let's wrap up the important takeaways of this lesson. Number one, Republic Act 7192 bestows women the following rights. A, women of legal age have the right to enter into contracts. B, women shall enjoy access to membership in all social, civic, and recreational clubs or organizations devoted to public service. C, Women have the right to be admitted to military schools. D. Married women are entitled to voluntary membership to Pag-ibig, GSIS, or SSS upon their working spouse's consent. Number two, UN General Assembly Resolution 2263 declares the following. A. All human beings are born equal. B. Women have the right to vote and be elected to public office. C. Women have the same rights as men with regard to property matters, choice of spouse, education, and economic and social life. And there you have it for our first lesson for this module. See you sa susunod na lesson, mga ka-learners!